Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So today is part one of a two-part series on the compound or the mineral of magnesium. Uh, magnesium, much like vitamin D, not much is known about it and it is a very powerful agent in the anti-aging field. Well, that's enough waffling from me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what magnesium has got to offer. Magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in the human body. It plays several important roles in the health of our body and of our brain. However, we may not be getting enough of it, even if we do eat a healthy diet. In this presentation, I'll go over five evidence-based benefits of magnesium, and there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. About 60% of the magnesium in our body is found in our bones, while the rest is in our muscles, soft tissues, and fluids, and that includes our blood. In fact, every cell in our body contains and needs magnesium to function. One of magnesium's main roles is acting as a cofactor or helper molecule in the biochemical reactions continuously performed by our enzymes. In fact, it is involved in more than 600 reactions in our body. And these include energy creation, where it helps convert food into energy, protein formation, where it helps create new proteins from amino acids, also in gene maintenance, where it helps create and repair damage to DNA and RNA. Muscle movements. It is part of the contraction and the relaxation process of our muscles. Nervous system regulation. It helps regulate neurotransmitters, which send messages through our brain and our nervous system. Unfortunately, studies suggest that about 50% of people in the US and Europe get less than the recommended daily amount of magnesium. So if we're not getting the right amount through our food, it may be necessary to take a supplement. Magnesium also plays a role in exercise performance. During exercise, you may need 10 to 20% more magnesium than when you're just resting. This is depending on the activity. Magnesium also helps move blood sugar into your muscles and dispose of lactate. Lactate buildup can cause fatigue. Studies have shown that supplementing with magnesium can boost exercise performance for athletes, the elderly, and people with chronic diseases. In one study, volleyball players who took 250 milligrams of magnesium per day experienced improvements in jumping and arm movements. In another study, athletes who were supplementing with magnesium for four weeks had faster running, cycling, and swimming times during a triathlon. They also experienced reductions in insulin and stress hormone levels. Let's now look at magnesium and fighting depression. Magnesium plays a critical role in brain function and mood and low levels have been linked to an increased risk of depression. One analysis in over 8,800 people found that people under the age of 65 with the lowest magnesium intake had a 22% greater risk of depression. Some experts now believe the low magnesium content of modern food may cause many cases of depression and mental illness. In a randomized controlled trial in depressed older adults, 450 milligrams of magnesium daily improved mood as effectively as a known antidepressant drug. Let's now talk about magnesium and type 2 diabetes. Studies suggest that about 48% of people with type 2 diabetes have low levels of magnesium in their blood. This can impair insulin's ability to keep blood sugar levels under control. Research also indicates that people with low magnesium intake have a higher risk of developing diabetes in the first place. One study, which followed more than 4,000 people for 20 years, 
found that those with the highest magnesium intake were 47% less likely to develop diabetes. Another study showed that people with type 2 diabetes taking high doses of magnesium every day experienced significant improvements in blood sugar and hemoglobin A1c levels compared to a control group. However, these effects may depend on how much magnesium you're getting from your food. In a different study, supplements did not improve blood sugar or insulin levels in people who were not deficient. So as I've always said, get a blood test and then supplement with only what you are deficient in. Studies have shown that taking magnesium can lower blood pressure. In one study, people who took 450 milligrams of magnesium per day experienced a significant decrease in systolic and diastolic blood pressure. However, these benefits may only occur in people who do have high blood pressure. Another study found that magnesium lowered blood pressure in people with high blood pressure, but had no effect on those with normal levels. So if you do have high blood pressure, I suggest you have a blood test and then only supplement with magnesium if you really need to. The inflammatory benefits of magnesium. Low magnesium intake is linked to chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is one of the main drivers of aging, obesity and chronic age related diseases. In one study, children with the lowest blood magnesium levels were found to have the highest levels of the inflammatory marker C-reactive protein. They also had high blood sugar, insulin and triglyceride levels. Magnesium supplements can reduce CRP and other markers of inflammation in older adults, overweight people and those who suffer with pre-diabetes. In the same way, high magnesium foods such as fatty fish and dark chocolate, can help reduce inflammation. So for those of you who are interested, I get my magnesium daily supplement from donorage.org, 250 milligrams of magnesium. That comes along with 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 and 120 micrograms of the MK7 version of vitamin K2. Uh, 60 capsules of that will cost you $18. If you use the My NMN discount code, you'll get 10% off and uh, you'll be able to purchase that for $16.20. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, that's the first part of a two-part series on what magnesium is and what it can do for us. And I'd be interested to see uh, in the comments below how many people actively monitor their magnesium levels and then supplement specifically with magnesium to make up for any shortfall. Um, I'd also be interested to see those of you that think you're covered because you take a generic multivitamin. Uh, I'd like you to look at the multivitamin tablet container and see how much magnesium you're actually getting in that compared to what your regular daily uh, recommended daily intake should be. I think you'd be surprised how much you're not getting for your money. Well that's it for today. I look forward to seeing you in the next part of this video. As always, please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.